Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and today we're going to be giving you a product overview and walk around of a 2018 John Deere 333G compact track loader. So stick with us here, we'll get started. Okay, starting here at the front of the machine, we're going to work our way from the top to the bottom, showing you some features and some stylings of this machine. So first thing we'll point out is the working lights here at the front, be your running lights there at the top. Oh, on each side of these lights, you do have an open spot there for additional auxiliary work lights. That is an option on this machine. As you can see, these are not installed on this one. Uh, working our way down, we'll point out the wide opening on this machine. Very easy for different size operators to get in and out. Also the handles to help you uh, getting up out of the seat into getting into the machine. Have two on the inside, one here on the side of the cab, and also you have them here on the boom uh, itself. From here, also some of the, the good feature of this machine is the steps. We have on the anti-slip steps here, here, and also on the quick attach. And on some of your implements that are lower to step over, you'll have the anti-slip steps on those as well. Another great feature here is the very easy service points. So here at the top of your cylinders on these big pins, down at the bottom pins of the cylinders, and also at this pivot point on your boom, all very easy to get to greasing points as these need to be daily maintenance points. Next and probably um, the best feature of the front of this machine is the electric quick attach. Guys, going from bucket to pallet forks, tree saw, whatever you may be using, this makes that a breeze. As it is electric, you can see this hose here, which most people would think is hydraulic hose, is actually just a cover for your electric wiring. It goes into the quick attach here. As you can see, there's no handles. So from inside the cab, push a button, hold it, it opens up those levers, can drop this implement, drive to your next one, scoop it up, hold it back the other way, and it'll lock that implement into place. Now, one thing that you will have to get out of the machine and hook up would be any auxiliary hydraulics that that machine may require, uh, but you do have these three couplers here and also these electric couplers as well. And uh, so the next thing we'll point out here is a little bit about the boom. Uh, over here, I'll show you that there is curvature and slant to this boom, as you can see, that that keeps the dust and debris and rocks from building up here and being in your vision, helping that slide off. Also here on the back and bottom side, John Deere's integrated tie down points. One here and also one on the other side corresponding in the same spot. That's one complaint that we had gotten a lot was that there's no specific place to tie this machine down. Well, John Deere has integrated that now into these machines. So next what we'll do is we're gonna go work around the side and then to the rear, but first we'll raise our boom up, show you the lockout feature. That way we can keep you safe while servicing this machine. Okay guys, so now I'm in the cab here. Raise my loader up. As I'm raising, I'm looking out both sides here. I have great visibility through these windows, which we'll show more in the cab section. And also as I look up, we have visibility through the top of the roof, through this mesh screen. I can see my boom raising. And at the pivot point, this thing raises up to 11 feet. It gives you plenty of clearance to get in those feeders, feed mixers, whatever they may be. Now I'm gonna reach back here behind me to my right. I'm gonna flip this lever and that sends out the lockout pin. From here, I'm gonna lower my loader slowly down onto the lockout pin, and that'll keep me safe while servicing this machine or doing what I need to do at the rear. So here on the side of the machine, the first thing we wanna talk about is the undercarriage. As we look down here, we've got our one big driving gear uh, that is attached to our hydrostatic motor. Uh, working our way down, we have our one or our two large idlers, one at the front here, one at the rear, and then in between, we have our five three flanged rollers. Now those three flanged rollers are wide, have a lot of surface area on the track that help to reduce with wear and tear. Also here on the framework, we have this panel here. What this is for is taking out these cap screws, you can adjust your slack, your slack in your tracks here and by adding grease to this and that will keep your slack in adjustment. When this thing is picked up off the ground by the boom, you can see the slack in your track. There is a measurement. You need to be between an inch and an inch and a half of slack between your track and the center roller. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind there. Next thing we'll talk about is our greasing points here. So they're going to be on your pivot points for your boom. Very easy to get to. Very important to keep these greased. As you can see, very large frame, solid, very good size lifting 
hydraulic cylinder here. Guys, in these machines, the hydraulics is probably the most important part as what you're doing with this machine is lifting, moving, doing those various things. John Deere puts out, this machine puts out 41 gallons per minute in high flow, 25 gallons per minute in standard. One thing that we hear very high praise on from the John Deere machine is not only the, avail the ability to lift, but also the ability to move when we have that load on. Uh, in some of the competitors' machines, they'll tell you it can move X amount of pounds, lift X amount of pounds, but once you lift that weight, can you still steer and move the machine? I would suggest that no matter where you go to shop for this machine or for the competitors, ask to get in it and get to pick up a load and move it and just see how much better this machine will do maybe than another. So from here we'll work our way on back. The last thing on the side of the machine I want to point out is these three holes that you will see at the rear behind your track on either side. As you can see these are pre-threaded holes here. These are going to be able to be there to add the additional weight. You can add up to three sets. So three on this side and three on the other. Very important when we're talking about ballasting this machine for lifting those heavy loads. So just so you know, that is an option. So from here, we'll talk about the rear and service points. So here at the rear of the machine, how we talked before, the first thing you wanna do before doing anything back here maintenance wise is raise these booms all the way up and make sure and let out your lockout pin there and then make sure and rest those booms back down on the lockout pin to keep that boom from if something were to happen from coming down on top of you as you were servicing this machine. Uh, so now going over our service points here, the first thing I'd point out would be the depth fill here. You have this latch here that you come up and there is your fill cap there. Blue universally for depth uh, just so you know that that is your fill spot there. Right below that we do have these tie down points as again I'd shown you on the front of the machine. You have one here and corresponding on the other side there. Uh, next thing we point out here is the large metal screen. Very good for keeping that dust and debris out of your fan as though this machine is equipped with a reversing fan, uh, which is an option. That reversing fan, uh, you can engage it to blow the dust and debris off of this screen. Very good feature for those that are gonna be working in dusty and dirty conditions. Uh, next, we can show the rear view camera here. Uh, as you know, universally these machines are hard to see out of. They're bulky, um, not much window space. So John Deere has incorporated this backup camera to help you uh, you know, when you're in those situations where you're needing to reverse and get out, get out of wherever you're at. Uh, moving up here, this is going to be your engine compartment handle. As you can see, this is lockable uh, to keep people out of it. If it's going to be parked at a job side, uh, site, you can keep it, this thing locked up. Because once you open it up, your diesel cap is underneath here. Keep those people from maybe getting into the, your diesel supply there. Uh, some other points that I'm going to point out underneath the cover here is you have your color coordinated fill spots. Right here you have your hydraulic oil that's color coded by orange, your engine oil by yellow, you have your burp tank for your engine coolant, and also your yellow dipstick here for your engine oil. So here will be your engine oil check and if we look around here to the side of the machine, this is going to be our hydraulic sight gauge. As you can see it's also labeled by orange. That's one thing that Deere does to keep everything uh, consistent is the color coding of those different fluids. Uh, as I was talking a little bit about the diesel cap, one thing that Deere has implemented on these machines is tethering their fill caps. Now that may not seem like a very uh, pertinent feature, but if you think about it, rather than losing that cap, breaking it, letting it get dirty, it is attached so it will not go anywhere. Also, how easy it is to get to everything, as you can see, very easy to reach. Also our air filter, which would be a big service point. Easy to get to these clips, open it up, and get to that filter to change it, service it, whatever you need to do. Uh, also, to get to the other engine compartments, very easy as well. We'll start on this side. We do have a handle here and a handle here, and these side shields just very easily lift up and off. So now once you've removed that side sheet, you can get to these other service points. Maybe you need to get to the alternator, some of your air conditioning lines, whatever it may be. Uh, you can take those side shields off very easy. Same thing over here on the other side. We'll come around and once again we have a handle and handle here. Lift up and off. From here we can get to the various different filters. Uh, here you know our main uh, fuel filter with our water separator. We have our AC components here which are also set up to be easily cleaned with a pin here. So once we remove our battery cover box 
which is the lift up and off. We can open up and clean out these elements here. Can replace that pin to keep things from moving around there. Now from here, I lifted off that battery box and you saw how easy that was. That literally sets on just by a pin here and on a slot here on that cover that you can very easily get to your battery. And it's also very well protected here by these heavy sheet metal covers. So we'll put that back on. So as you've seen from here, guys, the rear is very accessible, very easy to get to, as we know that with this machinery, we're constantly needing to do maintenance to keep these things running. That way you can get your business done in a timely manner without having that downtime. So from here, we'll put the side sheets back on. We'll show you a little bit about the cab. From in here in the cab, we're gonna go over the styling and features and controls of this cab. Uh, first of all, we'll go over some of the controls. So I'm gonna look up here to my right corner post and show that there are the various control buttons there at the top and this keypad here. One thing that you'll notice if I back up here is there is no key on this unit. This is a keyless unit that is ran by this soft touch pad here. As you can see, there's a start engine button there in the top left, then a stop engine button to the right of it. And then below, you're gonna have your parking brake button and your hydraulic uh, lockout right there in the top right. As we look below, these are going to be your different function controls, but also this is a 10-digit keypad that allows you to set different codes for different operators, as well as locking out the engine starting mechanism with those codes. Uh, to the right of it, we do have our speed selector for the engine as our throttle. We go up here and look at our various different buttons. First one we'll talk about is the quick attach button here. This is what I was talking about out there on the loader for attaching and detaching certain front implements. As you can see, if you held it down on the top, that would lock the implement in. If you hold the button down on the bottom, it would unlock and allow you to drop that implement. To the right of it is going to be our work light button. To the right of it will be our auxiliary electric button there. That's for those two auxiliary electrical ports I was pointing out, also out on the loader boom. To the right of it, we have our reversing fan. This is the button that you would push to kick that fan on to get rid of any dust or debris that may be on your screen. As you can see, we have an empty spot there for an extra button for a different function that maybe we add to the machine. Then we have our hydraulic downforce button there. Next to it is another empty slot. And then we have our AC selector to the right of it. To the right here, we have our thermostat control and our fan speed control and a very important panel that is in the top right of this cab is going to be our information panel for that soft touch keypad. This panel here indicates exactly what each button does and exactly how many features corresponding to how many lights are lit up on that certain button. So as you can see the different drawings here on this panel, see how they correspond to the soft touch keypad. That'll allow you to determine what each one of those buttons does. So from here, we'll work our way down and talk about the windows. It does have a three position locking system on the window on this side and on the other side as well. The position it's in now is going to be for slide. So from here, you can grab onto the lever here and slide this window open and close. If we were to lock the lever down, this locks the window into place, allowing it not to move. Or if we go to this slot, it allows the window to come up and out of the track to take it off for cleaning. Next, we'll move here to the handle on the door. Real easy here. Handle here to push to open, push out. Have a handle not only here, but on the other side as well for easy opening for entry and exiting the vehicle. As we go up, we see that we do have a rear view mirror and also this mesh screen in the top that I was talking about before, allowing for very easy, uh, easy to see out uh, visual for whatever those applications you may be doing, raising that load, uh, stacking that hay, whatever it may be. As we make our way to the left, we can see out of the front windshield that we do have a wiper. The control for it would be right here. You have a wiping mode there, and then also um, you can add fluid to the machine to run there for the wiper. As we make our way up, we have our information panel up here at the top. This has our fuel gauge and our temperature gauge. 
and various other functions using this menu and these selector buttons here. Right below it is going to be our backup camera screen, which I'll show a little more once we start the machine, and also a device pouch below here. Put your phone, pocket knife, whatever it may be uh, in this pouch. As we move our way back and up again, you also have a Bluetooth radio as an option in this machine. Very good for those long days in this unit for that operator that may be in this thing eight hours a day. So as we work our way back down, we'll talk about a little bit of the styling of this machine. As you can see here, we have our air conditioner vents, uh, one porting, pointing to the front of the machine for that defrost vent here. The hard vent tubes going back and also vents down here beside the seat allowing for airflow to the operator to keep them comfortable all throughout the day. As you can see in this machine we do have the electric handles here. Uh, you have two, one on each side. You can set these up for various different control styles whether it be ISO where you run the machine fore aft side to side with one lever and then the loader with the other. You can also set it up for H pattern which would be running the track forward and reverse with each stick on either side and then using the side to side functions for your loader. You do have the ability to select that from your keypad up here. So that is just based off of operator preference. Depending on which function you are in, you do have the decals on each side here explaining how those different functions work. So pay very close attention to that. Also towards the front there, you have the decal that shows you what each button does on each joystick. And again, you have these decals on either side of the machine here. Now, as we go back and we look and we see these decals, I want to point out you do have an opening port here and one on the corresponding side. These are going to be for your different fuses and other things that you need to get to in this housing. Like I said, you have a corresponding one on this side. Very easy to get to, no tools needed. Just your hands to undo these screws here. You can pop that off and get in there into your fuse box. Now from here, we'll look back to this rear window. A little hard to see with the sun. We do have this big rear window. Not only good for seeing out of, but also a safety feature. If this machine were to shut down and you were need, you could not get out of the front door here, you can push this window out to use it as a rear exit. Now, some people ask us, what happens if this machine fails and my boom is up and I cannot get out my front door and I'm too big to get out the back or for some reason I'm not able to get out the back, how can I lower my boom? Well, you do have that ability down here at your feet to the left. You would undo that black clip there, turn it with your hand, pull that cover off, and you have a valve handle that you would pull up that would release the booms, lower them to the ground, allowing you to get out the front. Now, if your locking mechanism is broken and you cannot get out this way, you do have these red handles here on the top and bottom that you can twist up on the top and up on the bottom, and this front glass will pop out, allowing you to exit. So, many, many safety features within this vehicle to keep you safe and to keep you from being trapped if there were to be an issue. Now, down here at my feet, with this configuration, we do have a foot pedal there for accelerator. You can choose whether this is to decelerate or accelerate on your uh, keypad at the top. And then you also have this foot rest here. As you can see, I have a, a ton of foot room down here keeping me comfortable throughout the day. So one thing that we hear from other dealers maybe is that there's not enough space here at the bottom. You do have space to be comfortable. Also, if I turn around here and look at my seat, I do have an adjustable seat. You can adjust the pressure up and down depending on which configuration you have, manually or by air. You can also adjust fore and aft. You can adjust these seats to make you comfortable, to keep you comfortable through the day however you need to. So guys, there's a pretty good rundown of the cab. From here, we'll hop out, we'll show you a couple more things, and that'll be it. All right, last thing we'll show you is the starting procedure for this machine. So I've just gotten in. First thing I'll do, of course, is put on my seat belt. Very important these machines as the heavy work that you're going to be doing with them. Get that comfortable. Next thing we'll do is reach up, pull our lap bar down. 
The machine will not start without this lap bar in place, so you must pull this down and have it in position. Next, we'll reach up to our soft touch keypad. If we had a code, we would enter that first. This one we do not, so we'll hit our start button once. That'll turn on all the electrical features. And then next, we'll hold this button down to start. As you heard the machine start there, um, we're ready to run. The only other thing that we would do is once we start, before we start moving, we would hit our park button here to turn off our park brake and to release our hydraulic lock here. Only other thing that I would show you that's very important in this machine is, like I said, the rear view camera. Like I said, the, this, the view out of, this, out of this machine is, it's very bulky. There's a lot of things to see around. You cannot see out the rear very well. That's where John Deere has implemented this rear view camera uh, to help in those rear movements. So from there, guys, to stop the engine, all I did was reach up and hit the stop button to turn this machine off. I hope that after seeing this product walk around and this overview, that we've answered any questions you may have, shown you some features that you want to see, and hopefully engaged you into asking us some more questions. So please let us know what you thought below. Ask us any questions below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.